Hello, everyone, and welcome to Into the Terminal. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about pranking your coworkers on Linux. Welcome, uh, Nate, joining me as always. Welcome to Into the Terminal, where we prove weekly that preparation is not optional. <laughs> Fair enough. So let's just dive right into the terminal, and we'll start talking about our first thing to mess with your coworkers. Uh, so I don't know if everyone has uh, has used this one before. Uh, one of my favorite things to mess around with my coworkers, especially on a shared box where multiple people are logging at the same time, is the wall command. And so wall uh, just passes a message. So let's say, um, Well, interesting. The, this 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 actually worked before. Why is it not working now? Uh it's it's going to be one of those days. I've been pranked. It, you've been pranked. That's what it is. Someone has pranked your uh, your terminal. Um, All right. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect to my other box, where it just worked. And uh, and we'll try it again. So the thing we're running into here, folks, is apparently the terminal sessions uh, don't necessarily support wall in the lab environment that we normally use. <laughs> uh, I do wonder before you before the last time you tried it, you were within Tmux, which might have a different terminal. Oh, that may actually be it. Nope. All right. Well, that uh, that completely busts that critical path item. You know what? Um, switch switch over to my share. I can show how wall works. Okay. All right. Not <laughs> now. We're off script. All right. So let's do wall. I'm glad this is the uh, the last episode of the of the year, Nate. Right, so this is exactly what Scott was trying to show us. You run that, and of course, it'll tell you who who sent the message. And wall means write to all. I think is really what that stands for. Uh, it's supposed to broadcast to all logged in uh, sessions on the machine. Right. If you want to get fancier yes. with it, you can add a dash n, which removes that header there, and then it looks a little more like an official system message. And Scott, the whole point of this was like, you can craft your own message and send it out to everyone that's logged in to try to get them to log out. Or, you know, uh, I think you had a story behind this from college days or something, right? Yeah. So, I mean, one, it's fun to just send messages to everyone, the entire machine. Yeah. Work appropriate, of course. Um, but when I was a younger person, uh, we did a lot of our undergraduate uh application coding on a shared system that was unix and one of the uh one of the teams that was working on a project was struggling because uh their compiles were taking too long because there were too many other people also working on the same project and so they very smartly used a wall to make it appear like a message was being sent from the system administrator telling everyone to log off the machine because the machine was going down for maintenance which everyone did uh, which meant that they got all the processor and all the machine to do their compiles, which got much faster. Um, and while entertaining, uh, the the college didn't appreciate it too much, and they ended up getting in a little bit of trouble for that one. But like, you know, sending uh, sending some ASCII art via a wall, pretty neat. Uh, I like your uh, using minus n to take off the header, so it's just like a message that gets sent with no who and whatnot. That's Amazing. Right. So, and uh, yeah, right I, I, I believe you can uh, you can broadcast to certain terminals as well, although I haven't tried that myself, but I think there's a flag when I was looking at the man page for it in preparation for the episode. There's ways to direct to certain so, terminals or whatever. So if so you, you do a, like uh, say Bob needs to log out, right? If you do a who or a W. Yep. Uh, see mean, the TTY so. there? So you could also do an echo as root. You can do an echo 
some string redirect dev PTS zero, and that would send to just that terminal. Ev you could type PTS slash zero, or is it just zero? Uh, slash zero. Slash zero. Um, so it, it basically Except, will write that message just to that terminal. So if I were like a different user, it would have shown test on that user's sc screen, not the one I just ran it on, is what you're saying. Correct. Now, that one's a little bit weird because it'll also literally print test on their terminal. Uh, so if they're in like the middle of editing a file, all of a sudden the Ooh. word test <laughs> just shows up on their terminal. And it's not actually in their file. It was written um, written to the display of their terminal. Right. So right. it could be a little bit off-putting if you're in the middle of something. And um, yeah, it, but, but also an entertaining one because you can also write messages to people's individual X terminals, which is what you did here, right? The dev PTS right. is a, uh, a X window based terminal. Um, dev TTY is the console based terminals. Um, and then I don't remember what SSH shows as, but, uh, but you can, well, this write... is an SSH session. So I think PTS is also huh. used for that. There you go. So, so yeah, yeah. Hey, just direct console access. That's uh, pretty, pretty novel as well. Always fun stuff. I do wonder if, uh, if the trick I'm going to show later could be leveraged in the same way. I think it probably could be. So we'll have to think about that when we get to one of my little tricks from for later on. Yeah. All right. Uh, so stay with us after the transition as we have some better planned pranks. Uh, <laughs> Nate actually has a really cool one that I was really excited by. Um, but most of them are like messing with stuff in the settings of different people so that you can uh, can have some fun with the other people that share your system with you. Uh, don't forget to mash that like and subscribe button if you like this content or you'd like to be notified if we're making more content. Uh, so stay with us. We'll see you after we return. Oh, Nate, last show of the year. Yeah, I mean, we, we've had a good record the past couple of shows, and, you know, there had to be, we had to close out the year with uh, with something. So uh, I apologize <laughs> if I, I apologize if I fall into a coughing fit during the show today, guys. I came back from AWS reinfect, uh, reInvent with a cold, surprise, 60,000 of my closest IT friends talking to me uh, on the show floor. I'm just about over it, but it's still hanging on. So bear with me. <laughs> and I'd like to recognize some of our frequent flyers. So uh, Jscar, Conan Kudo, Shantanu, excellent to see you over there in the chat. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll catch up on chat shortly once we get through the next couple of things. Um, so the way it's going to work is I'm going to do a couple, then Nate's going to do a few. Nate's are actually way more way more thought out and well put together than mine are, by the way. And then I'll close this out with the, uh, with the last one for the year. So messing with people's login environments. That's like one of the easiest, most time honored Linux traditions. And so we're going to show um, my terminal and I've installed a couple of things now that we uh, can do without wall. Uh, so I installed a couple of RPMs, um, but our first one, we're not going to have to worry about it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the home individual username is rel dot bash profile. And here's what I'm going to do. Um, there we go. Uh, so I just went to the bottom of the file and I added an exit command. And let me show you what that looks like. When this user logs in, Notice they're not logged in. If we, uh... oh right, you just log right back out again. There you go. Um, well, that's not the error message I wanted, but uh, essentially, because the last thing in our environment setup script is an exit, which closes the shell, what ends up happening is we open the shell, we set all the environment variables, run all the commands to set up their environment, and then exit. Right, which closes the shell. Uh, which is so if they're definitely in, not something that's uh, 
helpful, right? But <laughs> right, right. Um, and so essentially, they will uh, be be uh, irritated to then have to troubleshoot that. Right. Um, right. I actually and, don't and, know. How they, I guess they'd have to have root or maybe open a think support of, page. Think of how angry you're going to make Bash too. It spends all that time handcrafting a, a, an environment for this person, and then you just burn it down. Right. Right. Exactly. Uh, but it's a computer, so why do we care about its feelings? Right. All right. I don't know. So, I heard all about AI at, at reInvent, and I'm um, I'm actually kind of worried about computers' feelings now. All right. So when we remove it, uh, now things go back to working the way we would expect. Right. That when we log in as the person, they they we actually log in as the person, um, because we're no longer setting up the shell and then closing it thereby logging them back out again. Right. Oh, one of the other things I really enjoy doing is uh, adding a little bit of humor, levity, inspiration to someone's login because I care about them. Uh, so one of the other things I've done over the years, and I had to install a couple pieces of software to make this work. Um, but it goes into a different file. So in the bash RC, again, we'll go down to the bottom and we will add a uh, another command to run when they log in as part of their login environment now. Uh, so now when this person logs in, uh, they get they get a little cow that gives them a random quote of the day. Uh, and it turns out every time they open up a shell, they'll get a new one because fortune, uh, the fortune command generates a new little blurb of text. And then I just sent that to the cow say utility, which then wraps it with that nice ASCII art cow. And now every time they log in, they get they get a different thing. Right. So. Right. Hey, because your, whose life your isn't whose life isn't improved by a cow giving you wisdom when you log in? Exactly. Exactly. Question authority. There's a good one. Um, and there's a couple other like inspirational quote of the day things that you could get. They're a little bit more complex to download and and uh, run. To make this work, I had to install two utilities. One is the Fortune utility, which just prints a piece of text out of uh, stuff. Um, and then the other one was a Calse. Which just takes some text it gets as input and wraps it in the ASCII art Cal speech bubble. Um, so to install this, I got the fortune-mod RPM uh, and the Calse RPM from the extra packages for enterprise Linux repository. Yeah, I was kind of bummed that these aren't included with proper rel anymore. You have to go get them from Apple, but uh, I guess they're not really uh, enterprise requirements, right? So in the, for the sake of a slim down and hardened operating system, we've lost fortune in Kause. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, let's, let's open up those support cases for our uh, mission critical app Kause. I, I'm, I'm going to put in RFE totally. I have the power. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So uh, just to recap that one again, uh, down at the very bottom of our bash RC, which is for running commands when we log in, um, I ran the fortune command, which generates that little blurb of text, piped it into the Calse command, which then wraps it in the ASCII art cow uh, speech bubble. And now every time when they, open up a new terminal in their X window environment or log in, they'll always get a nice little, nice little cow saying. Good little cow. Thank you, cow. So Nate, you wanted to talk about uh, messing with people's environment too. Yeah, I've got a couple other fun ones here. So um, first of all, uh, this one, and in, in, there's lots of, there's lots of ways you could deploy this particular one, but Changing, changing somebody's shell can be interesting. And I've got a couple iterations of this one. So first of all, we're going to make a bash script and we're going to make that 
um, my test users shell. So here, we're just gonna copy this in here and paste this in here, I should say. So this is gonna make a bash script in bin no-shell.sh that just echoes a thing and then exits, All right? So now if I were to I'm gonna have to make it executable here, And for I, I found that you don't necessarily have to restore con, but it's good, good practice, right? Like it seemed to work, but you know, you can see it obviously relabeled it. So with something like a system shell, sometimes the system gets really picky about whether the contexts are right and whether it's in the right location. Because if you put a shell in some weird place, uh, the system may not recognize it as a shell. All right, and then we're going to take a user that I added, and we're going to make this that user shell. So we're going to take manager Scott and we're going to set his shell to S or to bin no shell. And I mean, you can guess what's going to happen when I try to log in as manager Scott. We're just going to use SSH because it's a great way to, you know, show a full environment. Out of curiosity, and is manager Scott Scott's password the word password? No, he's totally more secure than that. Uh, he made it the name of the company he works for. <laughs> but he did it off brand, so nobody will guess it. Anyway. <laughs> so you can see it just echoed the thing that I told it to echo, which is you deserve a day off. And then it booted me out of my session, right? So this is a little less like pranking your coworkers and more like a denial of service. So we're going to go a step further and make it a little more fun and a little less Scott can't do his job for the day. So we're going to go, we're going to edit that script that I just made with another fun yeah, little trick. Day. So we're going to... If it's uh, if it's for manager Scott, there's no capability that he would be able to recover from this. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to change manager Scott's prompt. So we do that by just, we set the environment variable PS1, which is your default prompt when you log into a, a RHEL system or any, uh, maybe not any, most Linux systems. Uh, this is just part of bash, right? This is what it'll read and it'll output as your shell. We're gonna set it to basically blank. It's gonna be empty. And then we're gonna run bash. So this is basically like a wrapper. We're gonna do some things and then we're going to run bash so that he does actually get a shell. I just pasted it instead of copying. Good thing I can undo. <laughs> All right, so this, this script will now echo, you deserve a day off. It'll change the prompt and then it'll run bash. So Scott, what do you think is gonna happen when I log in as manager Scott here now? Uh, I'm guessing that it'll log you in and say you deserve a day off and then just sit there looking blankly. Yeah. Right, so now manager Scott logs in and he doesn't get any prompt that says like, hey, well, I'm ready to accept commands, but if I do something like do a command, it, it's working, right? So I just don't get any actual prompt. And of course, manager Scott can easily fix this by fixing his prompt and then figuring out who messed with his shell and getting it set back, right? So this way Scott's not out of work for the day. Uh, unless he doesn't think to like hit any buttons and figure out. That's the other cool thing. If I hit enter, because the prompt is, I'm hitting enter right now, because the prompt is nothing, it doesn't actually even redraw the screen. It just sits there like nothing's going on. But if you type something, obviously it works. So yeah, poor manager Scott. Poor manager Scott. But I have one other one other fun one. So, so quick note before you move on. This is, yeah. this is some Unix history right here. Uh, PS1 is the primary system prompt, hence why it's one. Mm -hmm. There's also a PS2, which is your secondary. Yes. Uh, so whenever you like use a backslash to expand your um, command line and it gives you the little greater than sign, okay. that's actually showing you PS2's contents. Oh, so you could change PS2 to something else like... Yeah, but you would only ever see it used a, an empty quote or a mismatch quote or a backslash or something to escape the new line character on your command. 
Right, but the fact that it lets you, the fact that Linux lets you configure that, I think is cool. Like, maybe there's no reason to ever change it, but if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this last one is more about uh, driving manager Scott crazy than it is about keeping him from doing his job. So first of all, we're going to change his shell back. Where's my user mod from earlier? Because he doesn't need that broken shell anymore to make this work. And now we're going to make another bash script. And this one is going to call, we're going to call it bin beeper. It's going to be an infinite while loop that just goes and runs this thing, right? The thing it's going to run is it's going to run a sleep. Shuff is a command that I found that was a really convenient and easy way to generate a random number between 1 and 60. There's probably 100 ways to do this on Unix, Linux, uh, but this is the way I chose to do it because it was easy to just put inside of those, uh, those back ticks so that I would get the number I want. So it's going to sleep for a random number between 1 and 60, so anywhere within a minute. And then it's going to echo this special string, uh, which is the ASCII escape sequence for a bell not like show a bell on the screen but actually play like an alert bell okay so now if i i'm gonna have to of course chamod this make it executable again and then again i'm gonna restore con it for good measure And then we're going to take that and we're going to put it at the end of poor manager Scott's bash RC. Okay, and there's probably uh, better ways to get this done because I did actually run into some problems where even when manager Scott logged back out, this was still running in the background. So there's probably clear ways to make this work. <laughs> When you log out, it should kill that, but I don't know, it didn't. <laughs> Maybe because I used an infinite while loop instead of something a little more sophisticated. <laughs> All right, uh, you, and, weren't using, um, uh, you weren't using Tmux or something like that, right? No, no, I just did the oh. same thing I did earlier in my demo where SSH didn't. You, you know what it is? Um, when you don't kill a process, it gets re-owned by init, well, systemd in our case. Like the parent process ID dies, it just gets subsumed into PID1. There must be some way to tell the script that when it gets, when I when I log out, that, it's, that it kills itself off then, that I just didn't bother to look into. But at any rate, no hub command end and then disown it. Chantanisa. It's probably something like it, it, it's ignoring the sig term when you log yeah. out. But at any rate, this is a test machine, so I don't really care. Uh, all right, so now I have to quick um, loop back my audio, otherwise you're not going to actually get the full effect here. So, all right, so now I'm going to log back in as Manager Scott. That was, did you hear my tablet make a noise? That was not the noise. <laughs> we didn't but hear it. Every... It hasn't made the noise yet, but if we do like a PS, you can see here's sleep under the background. So oh, what's going to happen is, yeah. So the idea here, and I don't want to talk there, it just made it. Did you hear the there noise? It, it just made the noise. So what's going to happen here is randomly every zero to 60 seconds, manager Scott's going to hear a beep. It's going to be like, what? What was that? What just happened? <laughs> Now, for for optimal insanity, make that bigger, make it a, a bigger range, right? So it's like, I don't know, every 28 minutes or something, you hear a beep and it's like, what? What is beeping? What has gone wrong? So, uh, yeah, if you want to drive a coworker crazy, this is a good way to get it done. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Uh so we do have one more, but it's for the very end of our episode, right? So just a couple of, of notes before we jump to that one. Okay. Uh, most of the things that we talked about uh, require you to get access to someone else's stuff. So Nate, how could we get access to someone else's stuff? We were certainly uh, doing so this episode. 
there's a couple ways to do it. Obviously, we did everything today as root just for the sake of simplicity. Uh, but I mean, a couple ways to do it would be if you're on like a shared home directories sort of situation where maybe users actually maybe have shareable rights and privileges to different home directories or maybe in shared directories, right? Or maybe manager Scott asked me to write him a script for something and I just kind of tailed it onto the end so that, hey, here you go, manager Scott, it's done. And when he ran it, it went and did the thing that I wanted it to do as manager Scott. So it's like, oh yeah, I just appended this thing to the end of bash RC and manager Scott had no idea that I added that to the script. So that's a fun way to do it. There's a bunch of probably less ethical ways to get it done too <laughs> that I don't know if I want to go into. <laughs> so um, a lot of places that I've worked, if you don't lock your screen, they'll, yeah. they'll do different things to you, right? So like there was a day that I had to bring in donuts for the entire team because someone sent an email from me to the team saying that I was going to bring in donuts. Uh, and that was like how, how one was trained to lock their screen. Uh, but that would be something that you could gain access to their environment. Um, yeah, I sending emails, I feel like that one was a little bit much because like that was impersonation, yeah. right? The others were just kind of like accessing their machine and doing a thing. But um, I mean, that's that's absolutely, there's a guy I used to work with that if you left your mobile phone unlocked near him and walked away from it he would pick it up and do something uh, usually innocuous like he would he would post to twitter as you or he would he would take a picture and set it as your wallpaper or you know open up some website that he knows you probably don't want to see that kind of thing yeah yeah uh so you can access their machine via they're just untidy with their local console security mm-hmm you said uh, NFS directories. So you're saying that you could log in, uh, SU to root, and then SU to them? Uh, theoretically, right. or, you know, the sometimes in shared home directory environments, especially with NFS, because permissions sometimes get muddy if UIDs aren't shared across the whole environment the way they need to be. Um, some maybe lazier administrators will make those permissions a little more open than they need to be just because that it worked. So that's the way it has to be. Uh, you could leverage stuff like that. And this really gets into like bad administration and trying to find holes in your own, your own systems, which maybe as a whole will help uh, raise the security posture of your, uh, of your organization. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say, uh, Highlighting security problems by making uh, changes to be very forthcoming about the security problems is probably not a great way to win friends and influence people. Probably um, true. Probably yeah. true. Um, cool. So everything we show you today basically is like you have to access them, um, access their environment in some way, usually by exploiting root access that you have to a machine that they also have access to. Um, so producer Eric is telling us to wrap it up. We have one left. Uh, my, my last thing again requires root, um, is setting an enjoyable message of the day. So if you don't know the Etsy MOTD file is the message of the day. And every time someone logs in, they receive the contents of the message of the day. So um, if you would like to share your, your joy with your coworkers, uh, use your root access and access the message of the day. And I went ahead and, uh, and did one right here. Happy New Good. Year. Happy baby New year. year. Indeed. Is that, yeah. Oh, it's a baby right with now. a clock. I see now. Okay. So every time somebody logs in, this is this is what they're going to see uh, when they year. log. In. Yeah, and I've so seen, if you're... I've seen people rope uh, fortune into this as well. Somehow they they make the MOTD um, call fortune. I never really understood how they made that work because MOTD is just a text file, but there must be some way to make that happen. Yeah, so um, MOTD is a text file. And so you have to do something like a cron job, which sets it daily or yeah. hourly, whatever it is. Um, 
But yeah, uh, ASCII art is great. I, I personally have a huge affinity for it. There's sites where you can go and find it. So I literally uh, found this on the ASCII art archive and was like, oh, nice. what's coming up? New Year's. Yeah, let's look at New Year's ASCII art. And here you go. Um, because I'm not a talented artist with ASCII to make something that looks this nice on my own. Did uh, did you ever see the animated recreation of Star, War Star Wars A New Hope in, uh, in ASCII? <laughs> I have heard about it. I don't know that I've seen there's, it. But... There's literally a, I forget the address, but there's an address in a port that I, I forget if you curl it or if you tell it to it, and it just starts to play an ASCII rendition <laughs> of Star Wars A New Hope. <laughs> It's crazy. Uh, uh, so let's round out by just looking at the uh, the text or the uh, chat here. Oh, Shantanu suggests that we no hop things. Um, yeah. So that way, you, when you disown it, it stays running forever. <laughs> that would also be a good cool one. I like that. Yeah, right. A way to like. And then somebody's like, who's on the system? And you're not on the system because you said it with, uh, with a no-hub forever ago. Um, Diablo Espana says, set up a nice rule on Etsy security time.conf. They will just like randomly not allow them to log in certain times. That's a good one. There you go. <laughs> Chantel um, also thinks that the baby looked, it looked like it was holding a grenade. So that was. Uh, Ask yard is very limited medium. You, you know, um, I, I like producer Eric said, take a screenshot, hide desktop icons and wait. So like take a screenshot of their desktop and then yep. set that as the desktop. Um, that that's be hilarious. definitely one of the things that I have seen folks do over the years. And don't forget the old classic. And this is less relevant now that we don't necessarily have mice with a trackball in them, but tape over the mouse. <laughs> Well, I thought that worked on the laser mice. Does it work on laser mice? I I, I think it depends. It depends on, on the accuracy. I, I think a cheaper uh, optical mouse will just get like jittery because it can, unless it's dark tape, I guess. But if it's like scotch tape, it just kind of diffuses it. So it's, it's, it's not as accurate as it once was. So that's probably even better than the old ball mice. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing. Like just stick some electrical tape on the back of that. And now it's yeah. like... I don't know what's going on. Can't Why doesn't that. my mouse work? Call IT. Oh, there's tape on the mouse. God. We used to have two web developers at the little web host that I worked at where they were constantly pranking each other. And that was one of the common ones they went to, tape on the mouse. Oh, well, uh, thank you all for joining us on our very last Into the Terminal for the year. Uh, there won't be any new episodes before January. So uh, stay tuned. Um, and then same thing is true for Rel Presents. Our last Rel Presents episode was the live stream from AWS reInvent last week that Nate and Eric did. Um, yep. Nate, any, any like compelling reason for someone to go back in the archive and watch that one? Um, I was very pleased at the fact that the technology all worked from the show floor at reInvent and the, the quality came out so well, but yeah, we, uh, we went over, well, I should say Eric went over his demo of the CentOS to RHEL conversion tool. So if you're curious about that, we also did a little bit of a recap on just kind of what we had seen at reInvent so far and a bunch of back and forth chatter, the sort of stuff you'd expect from RHEL Presents. So um, definitely um, high enough quality episode that you're not going to be frustrated by all the background noise and whatnot. So go check it out if you're interested in that stuff. Great. Uh, so until next year. Happy into the trembling, everyone. Yep. Everybody have a great holiday and we'll see you next year.